Today we're going to be reviewing the lesson one questions for uh, unit one of fifth grade matter in motion. Lesson one is called exploring space with science. So question one asks us to find a specific quote from the text that explains why scientists ask questions. So looking back into our student reader and looking at the text, we need to find something that it says. And we're going to restate our uh, question as we give the answer. So I found a quote and I'm going to say that scientists ask questions because the text says, and that's a good way to start my answer, right? I'm restating my question and then I'm going to put the quote. And I found the quote that says, science is the search for explanations about the natural world. Because of this, asking questions is something that all scientists do. So this is helping explain why we ask questions as scientists. Question two then says, the text provides several reasons why scientists are so careful in how they set up experiments. What does the text say specifically about those reasons? What can you infer about why this is so important? So they're telling me that there's many reasons why we set up experiments and why we're careful. So what did the text actually say that showed me it were careful with our experiments? And then I have to try to infer or explain why being careful is so important. So I said that the text provides several reasons about why scientists are so careful in setting up experiments, including making sure to write down everything clearly and specifically in their lab notebooks so anyone can use the same materials and follow the same steps to get similar results. They also want to create a record of their thinking. The question then asks students to infer why this is important. For example, if another scientist can repeat the experiment and get similar results, it supports the results. If there is any question about the experiment, the detailed notes will help other scientists figure out what the first scientist was thinking. Now I said ask students to infer, I should have really said asks me to infer um, why this is important, but I'm giving that text. Yes, it didn't quote exactly word for word, but I can find all of those little pieces in my student reader, and that's what we're doing. We're going back to the text to find our answers. Question three, what is the relationship between the telescopes, stars, and bicycles? So we hear these things, they're used as examples. Well, why are they all connected? Telescopes, stars, and bicycles are all examples of matter because they all have mass and take up space. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter that makes up an object, so matter is made up of atoms. And I've talked about atoms, in my, I've read about it in my student reader, we've read about mass, so now I'm giving examples. And that's the easiest connection because telescopes aren't round, they don't move, they're not in the sky in the universe, but they're all made up of atoms, so they all have mass. Question four. How does the text use evidence to support the point that solids, liquids, and gases are different because of the amount of heat present? So to answer this question, I'm going to look at my student reader and find that section on solids, liquids, and gases, and really look at those two pages to figure out why how do I know there's heat added or taken away? What did they use? And I was able to see that the text uses evidence in the form of visual diagrams and images, plus descriptions about the melted ice cream as an example, to support the point that solids, liquids, and gases are different because of the amount of heat present. If I have an ice cream cone and I leave it in the heat, it's going to melt. But if I took that melted ice cream and put it back in the freezer, it's going to freeze again. So adding and taking away heat is going to change that state of matter. Question five, why do different kinds of matter have different properties? Different kinds of matter have different properties because of the number and kind of atoms that make them up. If I have hydrogen and oxygen atoms in something, it's going to have one type of property versus having hydrogen and helium makes a different type of property. And question six, how do chemical reactions cause matter to change? Chemical reactions cause matter to change because chemical reactions rearrange the atoms that make up the original substances. 
which results in new kinds of matter that have different properties from the original substances. The atoms themselves are never created or destroyed in the process. Think about when you burn toast. You have bread, you put it in the toaster, you leave it for too long, it gets burnt. Yes, there's a physical change that happens, but there's also a chemical change. I can't really change that burnt toast back to soft bread. It's different, something is new has created, but it's still bread. It didn't suddenly turn into ice cream. So that is why we see that they cause matter to change, and we know that those atoms are never going to be created or destroyed in that process. So don't forget to um, move ahead and look at lesson two. I'll see you next time.